everyone today i share you an engaging story about two friends alex and bob but before we go ahead if you haven't already please subscribe to our edureka youtube channel and click the bell icon to never miss out any updates from us also if you are looking for our data engineering masters program from edureka do check out the link given in the description below so now let's get started with the story Hey, have I told you about the incredible data engineering journey of a multinational e-commerce company? No, I don't think so. What happened, Alex? Well, let me share this story with you, Bob. This company had lots of valuable data but struggled with scattered systems and outdated databases. Oh, that's a tough situation. What did they do about it, Alex? They embarked on a data engineering initiative, Bob. It was quite a journey. I can imagine. So, what changes did they make, Alex? They integrated their data into a centralized system and automated data cleaning and transformation. It made a huge difference, Bob. That sounds so promising. Did it impact their operations, Alex? Definitely, Bob. They gained faster access to accurate data and generated real-time analytical reports. Impressive. Did they adjust data governance as well, Alex? Yes, they implemented data governance practices for data quality, privacy, and compliance. That's commendable. It's a great example of how data engineering can transform a business. What an inspiring story, Alex. Yeah, I thought you would find it fascinating, Bob. Data engineering truly has the power to drive success and innovation together. Yeah, thanks for sharing the story, Alex. It reinforces the importance of data engineering in today's data-driven world. Hello everyone, this is Sanya from Edureka and in this video we will be diving into the fascinating world of data engineering. So data engineering is all about harnessing the power of data to drive meaningful insights. In today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, organizations are grappling with massive amounts of data and that's where data engineering comes into play. Now let's take a quick look at the agenda for this video. We will start by the introduction of what data engineering is and why it is important for so many businesses outside. Then we will delve into the key components of data engineering such as data ingestion, data integration, data transformation and data storage. Next we will discuss some of the responsibilities of data engineers and the comparison between data engineer, data analyst and data scientist. After that we will delve into the installation process of popular tools and technologies which is used in data engineering. Finally we will wrap up with a glimpse of what data pipelines are. So let's understand what is data engineering first. Data engineering involves the design, development and maintenance of system and infrastructure to handle large volumes of data effectively. It focuses on the extraction, transformation, loading and storage of data which ensure its quality and scalability of analysis. Now let's understand what are the key components of data engineering. Data engineering helps to collect data from the disparate sources and integrate into a unified format which allows organization to have a comprehensive view of their data. It also involves processing and transforming data into a suitable format, which ensures data quality, consistency and applications. It includes the development of data pipelines and processing system that enable the efficient processing and analysis of data. This includes batch processing for large scale data transformation and real time processing for immediate insights and actions. Data engineering plays a crucial role in enabling data driven world. By providing clean, integrated and accessible data, data engineering empowers organizations to make an informed decision based on accurate insights and analysis. Overall, it is used to handle the complexity of data processing, storage and integration, which ensures that the organization can leverage the full potential of their data assets for strategic operations and innovations. Now, after the thorough understanding of what data engineering is and its key features also, we will delve into the importance of data engineering. So, here are some of the key reasons why data engineering should be important or why data engineering is important. So, our first reason is, it focuses on building scalable and efficient data processing systems. By optimizing data pipelines, leveraging distributed computing technologies and employing the performance tuning techniques, data engineers ensure that the organization can handle large volumes of data and achieve faster processing times. It provides the foundation for advanced analytics and machine learning initiatives. By structuring and preparing data in a suitable format, data engineers enable data scientists and analysts 
to extract valuable insights, build predictive models, and develop machine learning algorithms. Data engineering enables organization to process and analyze data as it arrives. This is crucial in scenarios such as fraud detection, recommendation systems, IoT applications, and monitoring systems that require immediate insights and actions. As we already know the importance of data engineering, we will cover the real-world applications based on this. So our first application is e-commerce sites. So data engineering is used to collect and process large volumes of customer data, transaction data, and product data. This enables e-commerce companies to predict recommendations, optimize pricing strategies, and improve inventory management. Our second example is social media sites. Like data engineering plays a crucial role in collecting, processing, and analyzing social media data, which allows companies to monitor brand sentiment, track user interactions, and derive insights for targeted marketing campaigns. So our third example is in finance and banking sector. Data ensuring is used to handle financial data, including transaction records, customer information, and market data. It enables fraud detection, risk assessment, algorithmic trading, and personalized financial services also. Okay, so now the fourth application is in the healthcare sector. Data ensuring is employed to manage and analyze patient records, medical imaging data, and clinical trial data. It enables healthcare providers and researchers to gain insights, improve patient outcomes, and develop predictive models. So, this example highlights the diverse application and the importance of data engineering in various industries, demonstrating how it enables organization to leverage the power of data for operation and innovation. Now, the data engineering process involves several key steps, including data ingestion, transformation, storage, processing, and integration. Let's discuss each step in more detail. So our first step is data ingestion. Data ingestion refers to the process of collecting and importing data from various sources into a data system or data pipeline. This can involve extracting data from databases, files, APIs, streaming platforms, or the other resources. The goal is to get the relevant data and make it available for the further processing and analysis. Second step would be the data transformation. Once the data is ingested, it often needs to be transformed into a suitable format for analysis or storage. This data transformation involves cleaning, validating, and restructuring the data to ensure consistency and usability. This step may include tasks such as data filtering, aggregation, normalization, data type conversion, or the application of business rules. So our third step would be data storage. So after the data is transformed, it needs to be stored in a structured manner, right? So this typically involves using databases or data storage system that provide efficient storage and retrieval capabilities. Popular choices for data storage include relational databases, data warehouses, data lakes, or distributed file systems. The selection depends on the specific requirements of the project, such as data volume, access patterns, and the analytical records. So our next step would be data processing. Data processing involves performing computations and analysis on the stored data. This step can include tasks such as data aggregation, data improvement, data summarization, statistical calculation, or machine learning algorithms. Data processing can be done through various tools such as the SQL queries, data processing engines, or the custom scripts. Next step would be the data integration. So, in this step, data integration involves combining data from multiple sources to create a unified and comprehensive view. This step is crucial when dealing with heterogeneous data sources or when different style produced data that needs to be consolidated. Data integration can be achieved through data consolidation or by using extract, transform, load process to combine and merge data from various sources. Next, our last step would be the data governance. So data governance is nothing but a framework and a set of process which ensures the effective management and utilization of data assets within an organization. It involves establishing policies, procedures, and guidelines for data management, data quality, and data usage. All the steps in data engineering process are typically iterative and may require continuous monitoring, optimization, and maintenance to ensure data quality, reliability, and performance. Data engineers play a crucial role in designing and implementing efficient and scalable data pipelines to support data-driven applications and analytics. Now, we move ahead 
with the key responsibilities of data engineers which typically includes designing and developing scalable and efficient data pipelines which extract transform and load data from various sources to a targeted systems next would be the managing and optimizing data storage infrastructure for performance scalability and reliability selecting and configuring appropriate data storage technology such as relational databases data warehouses or no sql databases to meet data storage and retrieval requirements data engineers are also responsible for applying data transformation techniques to clean filter aggregate and structure data for analysis or consumption by downstream systems they are also responsible for implementing data processing tasks using programming languages or data processing frameworks to manipulate and transform data efficiently now after analyzing the key responsibilities of data engineering we will proceed with our next topic and understand the key differences between these three roles that is data engineer data analyst and data scientist these three are the distinct role within the field of data science each with its own set of responsibilities and skill requirements so our first profile is of data engineer so data engineer are responsible for designing building and maintaining the infrastructure and system that enable data storage processing and retrieval as we all know they focus on creating and managing the data pipelines and architecture necessary for efficient data collection transformation and storage data engineers also work closely with software engineers and database administrators to ensure data is accessible reliable and scalable they typically work with tools like hadoop spark sql etl frameworks and cloud based platforms for data processing and storage then our next profile would be the data analyst so data analysts are focused on analyzing and interpreting data to derive meaningful insights they work with structured and unstructured data to identify patterns trends and correlations data analysts are proficient in statistical analysis data visualization tools and data querying techniques as well They often use tools like SQL, Excel, Tableau or Power BI to analyze data and create reports and dashboards. After that our next profile would be the data scientist. Data scientists possess a blend of skills from mathematics, statistics, programming and domain knowledge. They leverage their expertise to develop and implement complex algorithms and models to solve integrate data patterns or extract insights from large data sets. Data scientists employ techniques like machine learning, predictive modeling and statistical analysis to build predictive models, uncover patterns and make predictions also. They also collaborate with stakeholders to define business problems and design experiments to gather their data. So, to summarize this, data engineers focus on the infrastructure and data pipelines. Data analysts work on analyzing and reporting data, while data scientists concentrate on advanced modeling and extracting insights. So to make all this happen data engineers rely on powerful tools and technologies platforms like Apache Spark Apache Kafka SQL and NoSQL databases and cloud services such as AWS and GCP provide some building blocks for efficient data engineering these tools help process vast amounts of data facilitate real time data streaming and ensure secure and scalable data storage now let's understand what are the data pipelines are So here is the glimpse of what data pipelines are and why we use data pipelines. So data pipelines are the series of steps that extract, transform and load data from source to destination itself. Okay? So they enable the efficient and automated flow of data through different stages ensuring data quality, consistency and availability. Let's understand each step one by one. So the first step is extraction. The extraction phase of ETL involves retrieving data from various sources such as databases, files, APIs or streaming platforms. The goal is to extract the relevant data needed for further processing and analysis. This process typically includes establishing connection to the data sources, performing data queries or using data extraction tools to pull the required data into the data pipeline. Next step would be the transformation. The transformation phase of ETL focuses on cleaning, validating and reshaping the extracted data to ensure its quality and consistency. This step involves applying various operations and rules to the data such as data filtering, data type conversions, data aggregation, data enrichment or data normalization. The transformation process aims to make the data suitable for analysis, storage or integration into the destination system. 
Next step would be the loading. The loading phase of ETL involves storing the transformed data into the targeted system such as databases, data warehouses or data lakes. Then the data is loaded in a structured format that aligns with the schema or format of the destination system. This phase may include tasks such as data mapping, schema matching, data partitioning or indexing to optimize data storage and retrieval. After that, our next step would be the or maybe we call it as our last step would be the monitoring and handling. Monitoring and handling refer to the ongoing monitoring management and the maintenance of data pipelines only. Okay, so now let's discuss about batch processing and real-time streaming pipelines. So in a batch processing pipeline, there is a delay between time data is collected and when it is processed. This delay can range from minutes to hours or even days depending on the scheduled intervals. On the other hand, real-time streaming pipeline aim to process data as it arrives, which results in a minimal latency. Data is processed, analyzed in near real-time or within a very low delay. The second point is batch processing pipelines are designed to handle large volumes of data efficiently. They can process and analyze massive amounts of historical data in a batch mode. On the other hand, real-time streaming pipelines focus on processing data as it arrives, making them more suitable for handling data streams with continuous high-velocity data updates. Now, the third point is batch processing pipelines typically utilize batch processing frameworks like Apache Spark, or Hadoop map reduce. This framework processes data in chunks or batches, which allows for parallel processing and optimized resource utilizations also. While real-time streaming pipelines often use streaming frameworks like Apache Kafka, Apache Flink, or Apache Storm. These frameworks enable continuous processing of data streams, supporting low latency operations and real-time analytics. Now, the fourth point is batch processing pipelines are commonly used for tasks that involve historical analysis, generating periodic reports, or data preparation for machine learning models. They are well suited for scenarios where processing time is not critical but analyzing large volumes of data is essential. On the other hand, real time streaming pipelines are ideal for applications that require real time monitoring, immediate response, or instant insights based on live data. Use cases include like fraud detection, real-time recommendation systems, network monitoring, or IoT sensor data analysis. So our last point is, batch processing pipelines often require significant computing resources during the processing phase as they process large volumes of data in a batch mode. Whereas real-time streaming pipelines also requires computing resources, but are more focused on low latency processing and continuous data streams, requiring efficient resources allocation and management. So it's important to note that there can be the overlap between batch processing and real-time streaming pipelines and hybrid architectures combining both approaches are common. So that wraps up our deep dive into the world of data engineering. We have covered the essential aspects of data pipelines, governance and security, giving you a comprehensive understanding of how data is ingested, transformed, stored and processed. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights and sparked your curiosity to explore further if you found this content informative and engaging, be sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell and join our community for captivating discussion on data engineering and other fascinating topics. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!